Hello, this is Stephen Rosell, Senior Maya Specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to cover some of the UV editing updates in Maya 2017 Update 3. It's actually quite a big improvement. This release is one of the biggest UV-centric releases we've had in a long, long time. What we can see here is a character that already clearly has some UVs. Uh, if I take a look at the face and I go into the UV editor, you can see here that the UV uh, UVs are, have already been created. Now, a couple of things to point out about the UV editor. The UV editor has been completely overhauled. So right now, you can see that I'm seeing uh, images associated with the hands just because that's the same piece of geometry. Uh, I now have access, for instance, to the uh, different textures associated with this object. So if I just pull, use my pull down menu here, I can switch to my face. Uh, I can switch to uh, the face normal if I want to. Very easy to access. Um, but other things are redesigned as well, so we have easier access to display settings like the uh, distortion mapping and like my checker shading and things of that nature. Beyond that, there are a lot of new tools. If I go into the menus, you can see there is a lot of green. All this green indicates that they are new features, which means that there are a lot of new features uh, based on the, the number of green tools that you are seeing here. So one of the new tools in general is the new uh, UV toolkit, which is very much uh, in line or modeled after the modeling toolkit. It's basically a consolidation of all the different UV tools that you may need, uh, including tools for transforming UVs, for creating UVs, for cutting and sewing texture seams, unfolding your UVs after they're created, and then things like aligning, snapping, arranging, and so on. Uh, so all the different things that you would ever want to do with UVs are now contained into in this one kind of easy to use interface. So the other thing that we can do is uh, if I isolate select my head, uh, actually I want to get a different version of this head uh, and show you a new workflow for creating UVs from scratch. Let's actually uh, bring up an, a non uv version of this head. And once again, we'll isolate select that. You can see that I don't have any UVs uh, for this head. So for starters, I'm going to use my UV toolkit to go to the create menu. I'll just create a simple planar projection from the front of the character. And if I take a look in the UV editor, first thing you'll see is I've got a flattened series of UVs. Can't really tell much about those, but if I turn on my shell shading in the UV editor, as well as the viewport, you can now see how those resulted in terms of front-facing and back-facing UVs because I projected straight through the character from the front of the face. And, and now I've got basically overlapping UVs in the front and the back. So now I want to break this up a little bit. So I'm going to use a different display mode. If I left click, I get my standard front face, back face shading. If I right click, then I get unique shell shading. Right now it's all one color because I only have a single shell, but that's what we're going to change. So previously, if I wanted to cut my UVs, I could do that from the UV editor, but it was hard to do from the 3D view. Now we actually have a tool specifically for cutting 3D UVs or UVs in 3D called the 3D Cut and Sew tool. If I activate that, and actually let's just turn my checker shading off for now. Now I can go in and I can basically just double click on an edge loop and it's automatically going to cut that edge loop. So I'll basically cut the front of the face there and then maybe I'll grab the jawline here and I'll cut that. And you can see it added a texture border. It hasn't separated anything out yet. So I'll just come in here and I'll use my uh, same tool for separating out the ear and then I'll basically come in here and then just continue that if I hold shift I can continue that selection if I don't like the direction that's going I can just simply undo that or I can control to double click to remove that border and then maybe I want to continue it somewhere else so something along these lines so now you can start to see I've got unique shell shading let me actually un uh, or rather so uncut that edge. Now you can see I've got unique shell shading for each one of these. Now I can begin to kind of go back and forth between unfolding and cutting to see the results. So I'll go into the unfold tool and I'll unfold that and you can kind of see the results. They don't look great right now. If I shift click on any one of these, I can set my parameters here. I forgot to turn on the packing. So I'll apply, uh, set the pack and then reapply that. And now you can kind of see a little bit better result where it's actually packing within the the zero to one space, but I don't have enough shells. So I'll just hit the Y key to go back into my tool and I'll begin to cut this further. So I'll maybe grab an edge here and then I'll shift, double click this edge here. That will break that into another shell. Actually, I need to do the front as well, but I'll take this piece here, 
this piece here, breaks that into another shell. I may actually want to separate the eyes out, so I'll just come in here, and you'll notice I'm working with mirroring the whole time. Just double click an edge loop here, and I can basically cut those kind of interior eye sockets out. And now I can just come back in here and reapply my unfold, and I'm starting to get something that looks a lot better. So it's very cool now that I can actually not only cut from the 3D viewport, but I can also at the same time very clearly see where my UV shells exist in the 3D viewport. So that looks pretty good as a starting point, but I probably want to go in and uh, refine this a bit. For instance, if I turn on my checker shading, you can see I get a really nice distribution, but I may decide at a later date I need a lot more detail, uh, texture detail for the face. So I'm actually going to go in here and give myself a little bit more room to work with for the, the face. I'll take this shell. You can basically just double click on a shell and just move it around as you need to. All of the selection uh, tools have been added into the UV editor, so I can double click edge loops, I can double click to select face paths, and I can double click to select shells and then move any one of the component types around. I'm going to take that head and I'm going to center it using one of my transform tools uh, to the center of my uh, actually, I take that back. I'm going to go in and uh, align that rather to the center of my uh, UV space. Uh, and then I'm going to go in and start to scale that. So I'll just basically go in and just kind of visually start to scale it to maximize my space. Now I need to start juggling these other shells around. So I'll just double click on these shells over here and maybe just move those with my arrow key to another tile, or actually I might want to align them first. I'll grab this shell, and actually I currently have symmetry on, let's turn that off. I'll grab this shell and I'll just stick it in the lower left, and I'll grab this shell and I'll stick it in the lower right. Um, and now I'll just basically push these over to the other side. Now I may want to actually scale these down a little bit, but instead of scaling them with my manipulator, I might actually want to go in and use my transform tools and here I can do basic flipping and rotating of individual shells or both shells. I can also go in and do scaling so I can say I need to scale these down to maybe 80% uh, or something like that uh, and now I'll just click scale and they'll go down to 80%. So now I can start to reposition these you know, as I need to either automatically or, or manually. So lots of other things like that. Let me just go in and, and grab a couple of shells here. I'm going to grab um, actually this shell, if I can actually get it, it's a little bit hard to get to because it's hidden behind that other shell. I'll take that and I'll just move that up here and then I'll take this shell here and I'll move that over there. Um, the thing is, if I were to go in and take a look at my checker shading, I've got a, a fair amount of density in terms of texture resolution at the face and then less so on the ear. And I may decide after the fact, I need that ear to match not the back of the head, but the front of the face. So one cool thing that I can do is I can grab one shell and under my transform settings over here, I can extract or rather calculate the texel density based on a map size. So I choose the map size, calculate the texel density, and then I can basically select other shells and then I can apply that to those other shells. Now, when you see I turn on my checker shading, you can see the resolution is now matching the front of the face based on that texel density value. So now I can go back in and kind of reposition these. I'll just take these and I'll once again just kind of throw these into the corner here and maybe throw this into that corner and maybe I'll put this one down kind of more at the bottom. Uh, and then I've got these pieces here. These are actually the inside of the eye sockets. So maybe I'll put those up in the top center and I can scale them up a bit if I need to. But let's say that I wanted to actually preserve texture space. These are actually very tiny and kind of insignificant. I may not even need them. I can take one and I can just flip it right over and then I can actually shift select the other shell and I can use my different uh, alignment tools to go in and do things like stacking. So I can take one shell, I can stack it on top of another and now you can see that one shell occupies the exact same texture space as the other. Now sometimes this works perfectly and other times it may be close but not 100% perfect. So for instance, I can go in and grab the ear here, and let's say I wanted to use the same texture, I'll flip that, and then I'll go in here and I'll do a stack. I can either stack them, I'll just select stack them, and it will find their average or their center point, or I can take a UV on one shell, shift select a UV on another shell, and then I can come in here and I can uh, snap those together. So I have a whole snapping section 
uh, in addition to alignment, but I have a snapping section where I can snap together either A over B, or if I undo that, I can do B over A, which would give me the opposite effect. So now I can kind of align or conform one shell to another. Now, if I take a really close look, what you can see is that these, even though my mesh is symmetrical, it's not 100% accurate in terms of the symmetry. So when I do the unfold, I might get slightly different results. And it's very close, but just not quite 100% uh, uh, aligned. So this is a case where I want to match one to the other. So what I can do is I can grab any number of these UVs. For instance, I can just take a handful here. And then I can go into my snapping section and I can match the UVs. So I've got a match UVs option. And basically, depending on the threshold, that's way too high right now. It's set to 0.5. I'll reset that and to 0.01. And now it's going to find the nearest match. So now it's just a matter of finding the right thre threshold. I can grab all these, apply that. You could see that that was a little bit high in some areas. So I might just want to isolate these in certain areas, apply it. If it's a little bit too high, I can undo that and maybe set this to something like 0.05 instead. And now you can see I get a, a better match. So now I'll apply this in a couple of other areas. And basically uh, now I should have a good enough value. I can just apply it to the whole shell. And now it actually seems to match up pretty well. So now I have exactly identical UV shells, one on top of another, which is pretty cool and, and didn't take me very long to do. So now I can go in and start to manipulate this in other ways. So for instance, if I'm working with a symmetrical object, I may actually want to go in here and uh, copy some edits from one side to the other. For instance, if I were to go into my uh, smooth tool, or I could use the grab tool, either one, and start to manipulate the shell on one side or the other, or hold shift, and then maybe start to smooth that out a little bit, something like this, where I'm actually kind of giving myself a little bit more space, or perhaps I want to turn on my shell shading so that I can actually see the results of this. Maybe I want to try to remove some of this distortion in the nose that I'm getting here. And this is kind of a bit tricky, a bit trial and error, but you get the basic idea. I can start to kind of manipulate this so that I minimize my distortion or I give myself more or less room in certain areas, depending on the needs of the, the situation or the needs of the character. But now I can start to copy this from one side to the other. So after I make my edits, I can actually grab all the UVs on one side of my character. Let's turn off shell shading for now. And I can symmetrize those off to the other side. So I just choose the axis I want to symmetrize across, apply that. And now you can see that that was before and that was after. Very subtle change, but it allows me to get exact, uh, exact symmetri symmetrical uh, changes from one side to the other. So as you can see, there are a lot of changes that have been made um, across the board with UV editing. It's one of the biggest UV editing releases probably in the history of Maya. And there's really more uh, to talk about than we have time to show. To go through each one of the new features would literally take an hour or two probably. But it's all well documented um, and a lot of it's very intuitive. You can just kind of start to experiment with it and very quickly figure it out. All right, that wraps it up. Uh, thanks for your time. Take care. Bye.